Hello and welcome to episode four of Freaky Friday. Every Friday in the month of October, I have been diving into my favorite fall eyeshadow palettes and creating looks that are deeper, bolder, and smokier than I'm usually comfortable wearing. I thought it would be fun in this Freaky Friday series to just step outside my comfort zone and play with makeup and help show you, if you're nervous about playing with color over 50, that you don't have to be. It's fun, it's makeup, and if you don't like it when you're done, you can wash it off. Today I am using the Tarte Gilded Palette to create this wine berry look that I just love for fall. Stick around and I'll show you how I did it. I primed my eyes with the AOA Soft Base Nude Eye Primer and I have the City Lips Plumping Lip Gloss in clear on my lips. I'm going to start this look the way I start most looks and that's by going into a light ivory skin color for me type of an eyeshadow shade to, to set my eyeshadow primer and to provide a base for blending. I've already had makeup on once today. I went to work this morning and I kind of did a practice run of this look with a different palette. It was um, a NARS palette and I had forgotten when I got the, that palette and I looked it up that there was one shade in it that had carmine in it. And I thought, oh, I'll remember which one it is and I won't use it because I like the rest of the palette. Guess who didn't remember that there was a shade in that palette that had carmine in it? And guess who used that shade? My eyes were on fire, you guys. Um, I could not wait. I could not wait to get home and wash my face and take that off. My eyes were watery and itchy and burning and just getting like gunky and goopy. Oh, it was terrible. So lesson learned. If I have a palette in my collection that does have a shade or two that has carmine in it, I either need to depot those shades like I did in the Stone Cold Fox palette, or I need to just pass it along to someone who can use it without the irritation that it gives to me. It's it was terrible. So now I think I'll go into this kind of mid-tone rosy shade right here for my transition blending crease shade. And I am just going to dab this one, I'm not really sure, because sometimes these shades can pull a little bit um, warm on me, even though they look pinkish and wine in the pan. But this one, sh we'll see. It should be okay. I'm not going to do tape today because I can just use a makeup wipe to clean up any fallout or whatever. Um, since I already had makeup on today, I did all my skincare in the morning. When I washed my face this afternoon, I just put a moisturizer on. And so if I clean that up and need to reapply a little moisturizer. It's not that big a deal. To keep this video from being too long, like with my other videos, I will show you one eye on camera and then I'll do the other eye, but I'll probably edit that out unless I get to chatting about something. This shade, by the way, was called Roaring. And now I'm going to go into this really deep color here called Jazz. And we're going to, I have a denser, still fluffy, but narrower brush. And I'm just going in on one side of it. I now have pigment on the top of the brush, but I don't have any down here. And so if I put my brush here with the pigment on the top, then I'm not going to have to worry too much about getting it down here. It's going to stay above the brush. And then when I want to go into the crease, I flip it over so that the pigment then stays below the brush. So just a little tip on how where you put the color on your brush can determine how it goes onto your eyes. And I really want to build this up. So I'm just going to kind of keep going in until I get it as deep as I want, because I want this to be really deep wine and dramatic. That's the point of these Freaky Friday, right? To step outside the comfort, comfort zone and Get a little bold. I'm a little more comfortable with these shades than with the purple and the smoky that I did at the beginning. So this one doesn't scare me as much, but I am going to probably go into abstract as well 
to um, really deepen up that outer corner. Okay, I am going to go into abstract and put this just in this outer V area to really deepen up that outer corner of my eye. And it is making a mess, but I don't care. All right, there's two shimmers in this top row. There's Red Hot, which is that one, and then Opulent, which is a little bit more hmm, pink, maybe. I think I'm going to use Red Hot. And I was going to try to use a brush, but it's already on my finger, so I think I'll just leave it on my finger. I may end up using this one to lighten up. The center portion of the lid so that it's not too dark and again this is one where I'm just going to trust the process because until I blend and tweak and get my the rest of my makeup on and blush and lips and all that right now it's looking a little scary so I'm putting that opulent right in the center and it does really kind of brighten it up. If you're new here and don't know about my carmine issue, about two years ago, I discovered that I was sensitive to carmine and that prompted a huge eyeshadow declutter because I had to get rid of everything that was causing me a reaction. And I had a few palettes that just had one or two shades with carmine in them. And so I thought, oh, I'll just mark them and then I can keep the palette and continue to use it. However, I get busy or I get in a hurry and I don't pay attention to the marking and inevitably the shades that have the carmine are the ones that I want to use and it's not always the red ones. Sometimes it's a neutral or something like that and then I end up miserable because I don't really realize it until I'm at work for about two hours. So I have learned my lesson and I will no longer buy palettes that have carmine at all. They need to be vegan or I'm just not gonna buy them. Even if they say may contain carmine, I'm not risking it. For my inner corner shimmer, I have Glamour, which is this one down here, and Bright Lights, which is this one in the corner up there. And I think, I think this one, which was Glamour, has a little more pink to it, and this one seems a little more peachy. So we're gonna go with Glamour, and I'm just gonna put that right in that inner, I will, do, I will do this bright one down here called Elegant on my inner corner after I have the rest of my makeup done. I'll do the, so what I'll do is I will finish this up, do the rest, clean it up, do the rest of my makeup, and then come back to show you what I'm going to do with the under eyes. Um, I'll probably also do my blush on camera so that you can see what my choice was there. And as always, it looks a little crazy because it needs to be blended and cleaned up. But I'm going to take a clean brush and just buff these edges. I will work on shaping and defining this better once I have my base makeup done. For now, that's all I'm going to do. I know there's going to be touch-ups and tweaks that I want to do after I have my makeup on, and so I will show you that in just a minute. For my primer, I use the Hard Candy Smoothing Primer Balm. It's a little bit like the e.l.f. Putty Primer, but I like this better. I think it's creamier. I think it does a better job filling in pores, and I just like it better. I then use the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless in the shade 115. This is so good. You guys saw me. My skin was looking kind of rough. This, I didn't use a very heavy layer. I just put it on with my brush and then put the Maybelline Fit Me loose powder over it. And I just feel like, even though I can still see my skin and I still have some spots showing through over here, it just feels evened out and smooth. And I feel so much more confident about the way my skin looks. And then just a little bit of the Revlon Candid Concealer under my eyes. And I did take it out and kind of up along the outside here to kind of help with that lift. I'm gonna go ahead and do bronzer and blush, and then I will go back to the eyes. For bronzer, I'm gonna use the Wet n Wild Color Icon Bronzer in Sunset Strip Tease. And I'm using this one today because it has a little bit of a reddish undertone. I have these 
wine red kind of shades on my eyes. I don't want to have a warm orange bronzer on. That would clash. You want to make sure that the undertones of the products you use are all going to be harmonious together. And so that's why I'm doing a little bit more of a reddish bronzer. And I'm just taking that on the high points of the face where I would get some sun if I were out in the sun. And just a little bit down my jawline and my neck just to kind of blend my face with my neck. I have been very, using very little bronzer, a lot of times no bronzer lately. And I definitely have not been doing the whole sculpted contour kind of thing. I just feel like it gives my face a more youthful appearance to not have it on. And for blush, I'm going to use Essence the Blush in Believing. And of course, because it's these plastic components, the lid has come off, but this is a kind of a mauvey, rosy undertone as well. And that is going to go just right on the high points of the cheek and a little bit further forward on the cheek because I like the way it makes my cheeks look a little plumper, a little fuller, a little more youthful. When I did the, I think it was the purple one, I put a picture of myself when I was about 25. And even though I weighed probably 20 pounds less then than I do now, my face was so much fuller just from the normal fat pads that we have on our face and stuff. And so I think looking, I think having a little bit plumper, not quite so gaunt appearance on your skin is actually more youthful. Not that I'm trying to look like I'm 20 again, don't get me wrong, but there's nothing wrong with wanting to look the best you can at the age you are. Okay, going back into the palette and finishing up the eyes, I think I'm gonna go back into jazz and put just a little bit here under the outside and kind of smudge it out. I want it to be kind of smoky. And I will be using the other end of this to kind of sharpen and define this outer corner here. But if I have a smaller brush, I probably would use it because this is getting down a little bit further than I want it to, but it's okay. All right, with the liner brush and into abstract, I'm going to kind of press that into the lash line. And then using that brush, bring it out and up, kind of like a wing, but I'm going to also then diffuse it up into the rest of the shadow. So it's not going to have necessarily a wing shape, but it is going to have more of a distinct line. It's going to have more of a V shape by the time I'm done with it, hopefully. Okay, I have a clean, smaller kind of fluffy brush that I want to blend out this corner with. And you really do just have to go back and forth and play with it until you get the look and the depth and all of that that you want. And I feel like I got this down just a little bit too low right here. And I don't want you to think that if you make a mistake that you have to just start over because you have products that you can use to fix it. I'm going to take a little concealer and my finger and because I want to get in a little bit more precisely, I've got this tapered brush and I'm just going to blend that in under there to brighten it up a little bit so that it doesn't pull down quite as far as I had it pulling down. Yes, I like that better. And then I always feel like I lose a little of my shimmer when I'm messing around with other stuff. So I like to just kind of top it off. I think I'm super happy with that. I'm going to put on liner and mascara and I'll be right back to do lips. I'm going to go for a bold lip today. I think I want to use this Wet n Wild Gel Lip Liner in Gone Burgundy. to really tie in the, the deep vampy eyes.
I have an e.l.f. day-night lipstick duo in the Best Berries, and I'm going to use the Night Shade, which is a really pretty deep berry. I always get nervous using a really deep lip like that because I'm afraid I'm going to get it everywhere. Is that on my teeth? No. While I was away, I used the Wet n Wild Breakup Proof Retractable Eyeliner in Black. I just felt like this look needed a black liner instead of brown. And then in the lower waterline, I used the BH Power Pencil. And I don't know what color this is because I think it's pearl, maybe. I don't even know if you can buy them anymore. But it's been sharpened enough that I can't see the color anymore. It's just, um, it's just kind of a pearlescent pink. And I used that to brighten up that lower waterline. And then two coats of the Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions on my lashes. I did this look completely base makeup and all in about a half an hour. And that's what happens when you're up against a hard out and you have to leave the house, but you need to get your video filmed. And so even though it is full glam, deep and vampy, bold, it also didn't take very long. Have you spent any time during this month of October playing with your fall palettes and stepping outside your comfort zone? If you have, let me know down in the comments below. I would love to know what you've been doing. And now that I wrapped up this series, what else would you like me to do? Let me know because I want to film what you want to see. I hope you all have a beautiful, blessed day, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.